Well, thanks so much for your uh, for your interest in our uh, polling event. Yeah, um, tell us tell us a little bit about what it is uh, what it is that you guys that you guys did with the polling event. Sure. Well, at election season, um, a lot of churches, you know, will distribute voter guides or, you know, the preacher will use the pulpit to tell his people how to vote Christianly, et cetera. And we said, what if we flip that around and actually didn't tell people who to vote for, but actually asked, you know, what they think. And so the obvious technology for us to use in that was, uh, you know, live polling, uh, poll everywhere is a service we used. Um, and what we've done is, you know, generate a number of questions to help people think biblically about the issues and engage with them. And then they text in their answer live during the sermon. Now, you guys have a few weeks under your belt now. How has it gone? It's, the f response has been phenomenal. Uh, you know, people love it. Uh, you know, this past Sunday I said, okay, you're going to hold your Bible in this hand and your iPhone in the other. And, of course, <laughs> for some people it was the same thing. <laughs> you know, I think they like that. And I don't know if they're paying attention, but at least they can play Angry Birds during the sermon. But they, uh, when I asked the questions, it was very interesting because as quickly as they caught on to it, um, you know, I was wondering, like, oh, is this technology going to be disruptive or the flow of, of thought? But they actually began instantly, you know, texting in their answers even before I could finish the question. And, um, you know, the technology is kind of an anthropomorphic thing. So they could see it changing on stage on the screen that I was using, referring to, which I think that really enhances it. It's not like, okay, give the results, you know, 10 minutes later. But they're watching the, the trending going up and down. So it had a real live feel to it. Now, how did that affect even your your preparation? Because I mean, like you said, the the numbers are changing as you're speaking. So I mean, did that affect your preparation at all? Yeah, it did. Um, you know, there's you know, again, some pastors like to script out all of their thoughts, but I had to leave a uh, some room in there to say, hey, we're going to have to ad lib the results here. Um, particularly, like you know, we asked some baseline questions: Would you identify yourself more as conservative or liberal or independent? And what's interesting is we're a multi-site church. And so Liquid has campuses in Morristown, which tend to be a fairly conservative area. It's fairly affluent. But then in New Brunswick, it's a college town, home to Rutgers University. So typically a little bit more liberal there. And then Nutley, uh, New Jersey, is a little bit more blue collar. So they had their live polling going on as well on their own screens. So, you know, you have to make some comments that are, you know, kind of bring everything together there, which is a challenge. I loved it. I see. So you... You even had the results for the specific campus. Right, right, exactly. Yeah, the campus, our broadcast campus in Morristown, New Jersey, uh, where I was speaking live, I had the live, um, you know, uh, numbers on stage, but then point to the side screens at the, our uh, multi-site campuses. Wow, so it was, even, it was even more complex than just simply having, you know, one ballot box, essentially. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it wasn't a, it wasn't just yes or no. You know, we're giving people multiple choice. Some of them are opinions. Some of them are trending ideas. Um, but it really was. It, it, I'll tell you what it does is it creates such a sticky atmosphere then for the biblical teaching. Um, you know, one of the questions we asked. You know, in this election, what's the most important issue facing you know our nation? Is it the economy? Is it social policy? You know, foreign issues. And of course, the economy skyrocketed, right? Everybody's like, oh no, it's a debt, it's, it's the recession jobs. And it was so interesting because then we went immediately and looked at, you know, where Jesus is asked about the wedge issue of taxes. <laughs> you know, do we give them the Caesar or not? Do we pay or not? And it's like, wow, 2,000 years and nothing's changed. We're still arguing over the economy. That's awesome. That's awesome. So l let me ask you, is this, is this a kind of technology that you would use in the future? Yeah, absolutely. I think for me as a pastor and a guy who communicates and teaches, this is a different level of engagement. You know, you can, you know, ask people to raise their hand, et cetera, but this is so live. What I love again about it is um, it's not like, okay, texting your results and then we just show them to you. It's actually trending as you're talking with the audience. So the audience becomes a participant. So uh, my mind has already started expanding about like, hey, when we're done with this series poll, that this has been a great application for it. But where in, you know, future messages and future topics and issues, you know, can we solicit that live interaction? Right. And, you know, like you said about asking people to raise their hands, there's there's no uh, element of peer pressure, group think. I mean, these are totally anonymous, uh, not anonymous. Yeah, it's it, it, absolutely. I know exactly what you're saying, because I think in churches, right, the tendency is, oh, boy, there's a right answer and a wrong answer here. <laughs> And if I raise my hand and say, oh, I'm a Democrat, am I going to get stoned? <laughs> 
And I think, honestly, this kind of, you know, that, that texting um, allows people who may might previously didn't have a voice or felt intimidated or didn't want to, you know, be seen a certain way, they just, you know, were able to say whatever they thought. And um, so it gave us a much more true read on the pulse of the community. Right. And, and like you said, the engagement, uh, as it was, created such an environment of interactivity. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So it, it wasn't, you know, just, hey, what do you guys think? And let's talk about that. It's let, let's take the pulse, kind of the zeitgeist right now. Um, and then even ask people to think, you know, are you answering this as a Christian, as an American, as somebody who, you know, thinks more politically or, you know, is our kingdom theology kind of actually trump all of those? So it was a tool really in even helping people elevate the conversation. You know, I think like a t topic like politics, it gets so petty, you know, and just very who's right, who's wrong. It's binary choices. Yes or no, right or wrong, right or left. And we're like, Jesus isn't red state or blue state. He's purple. <laughs> and the questions we asked tried to elevate the conversation. Now, now that you've, now that you've done it and you have a few weeks uh, where you've experienced this, is this something that um, you would do every week or on special occasion? And what kind of pitfalls would you tell uh, another pastor if he was thinking about doing something like that, if there is any? Yeah, it's not something I would use every week uh, for the same reason that I wouldn't use a film clip every week. You know, you, you got to pick and choose your spots. I think, you know, the tendency is, oh, this really works. And then everyone does it to death and then it, it actually loses its redemptive values. So I would choose this in, in specific spots where perhaps you're talking about a topic that has a number of different opinions. Um, you know, if you're polling people for their background, I think it's a great technology to use, particularly on big days where you know you're going to have first time visitors. Um, this was a series where a lot of our, our pe people invited their friends to because it's, you know, it's a topic everyone's talking about around the water cooler and coffee shops and whatnot. So we had a lot of people, it's their first time in church, and I had a guy come up to me afterward. He said, well, this was like a digital mass. <laughs> so I guess he was Catholic and he hadn't been to you know, church in a while, but he loved it. He loved the idea that actually the church, although we're holding you know, firm to our message 2,000 years old, we're continuing to innovate with technology. So I'd say pick and choose the spots very strategically uh, so that you don't overdo it or over-rely on it. Cool. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time, Pastor. And this kind of technology is something we'll certainly be reviewing more on Church Mag because it sounds pretty awesome. Awesome. Thanks, Eric. We're big fans of you of Church Mag for sure. So say hi to the gang there. All right. Thanks, Pastor Tim. Take care.